In this tutorial, we will look at Python's conditional statement. Python only really has one conditional statement, and it is the if statement. Let's take a look. Basic syntax is you type if in all lowercase, followed by some condition or expression. In this case, we'll test to see if 2 is greater than 1. And if it is, anything following in the indented lines will be, will be executed. In this case, we'll just print out that this is a true statement and see if that works. It did work. Now in Python, you can also compare like variables or objects of different sorts. So just to make sure that you guys know what I'm talking about, let's create a couple of variables and then test to see if they are greater than or equal to each other. Oh, I need to make that bar two actually. All right, let's make sure we know what's going on here. So var is two and var two is three. Okay. So if var, let's see, two is greater than var. We should be able to actually print this out. As you can see, that also evaluated the true and that printed that out. Really cool, huh? Okay. So what we need to do is take this code and find out what else we can do with the if statement. As you might expect, you also have the else statement, which allows us to print if this actually happens to be a false. So let's say that um, the variables were reversed in this case. Let's say that var two was less than var, um, than just var, yes. Then the print uh, false statement would have happened. So let's actually change stuff around a little bit and make it make it so. So let's see, you make var equal to ten, and then you run this again. And we say it's a false because var2 is no longer greater than var. Pretty simple. The next piece of, of information is that you can also do if and elifs. So if you want to do like an if, else if this, else this, else if that, you know, you can create a huge chain if you really, really want to. Most of the time you don't want to do that, but we'll go ahead and create just a really simple one. So in Python, we can have it ask us for values from the user. So we'll say, you know, how much does the candy bar cost? And we'll see, it asks us for that. So what does that cost five bucks? or five cents, or however you want to look at it. And then we'll convert that to an integer because that makes it easier to compare things with. So let's just recast that. And now if we print that out, it should be an integer now. Okay, it doesn't have any quotes, so it is. Now let's create our conditional. So if value is less than 10, in our spacing right. Python doesn't actually care about spacing, it just looks a little bit better if you do it nicely. So that's a great deal. Else if, oops, 10 is less than or equal to the value and less than or equal to 20. Print something different. And finally, you can add an else for anything else that happens. Oh, 
Okay, let's try writing this little script and see what happens. So value was less than 10, so I printed out the first uh, print statement. Let's just play with this a little bit and see what else we can get it to do. So let's say we want 15. And we convert that again. And we just go up here and we run this code. And now it should print what's inside the else if statement. And it does, so that's cool. And this time I'll take a shortcut and set, set this to something crazy like 45. And we will just rerun this code and see if we can get the else statement to execute. Ta-da! That worked. So as you can see, as you change the amount that value is equal to, different parts of the else, if else structure will print. So technically we could have a whole bunch of these testing between 10 and 20, 30 and 40, 15 and 60, or however you want to, want to do it, you could do it that way. There are other shortcuts which we might, which you could do, you like using a dictionary for your values. But anyway, we have other things we need to look at. So in Python, you can uh, chain if statements together using and, or, or not. Or actually, you can actually take all, all three of those and put them together. So let's take a quick look at that. If you use an or statement, you're te basically testing two conditions. So um, it's easy just to take a look at some code. So let's just do that to try to be confusing. So we'll make y equal to 20. So if x is less than 10, or you notice that turned orange because or is a keyword, y is greater than 15, then this statement should print. So as you can see, y is greater than 20. So that's why this statement printed. The x is equal to 10, so the x is not why the two statement happened. So basically this will print if x is less than 10 or y is greater than 15. Now if you want to make this a little bit more interesting, we can change it to an and statement. Let's just steal this code and change a few things. We'll change this to an and. and try running it. So now y has to, I mean x has to be less than 10 and y has to be greater than 15 for the statement to print. That's what the and means. So both both expressions have to be true for this to print. All right, so it didn't print anything. So obviously one of these statements is false. Let's find out which one it was. Is y greater than 15? Yes. Is x less than 10? False, so the x less than 10 part is the false part. So let's just change things and make x equal to five and try rerunning the and. Let's just go up here and grab it and try rerunning it. Now the state, both statements are true, so the statement will print underneath the if conditional. As always, if you wanted to print something else, you could also have an else here. So just print whatever that, you know, the statement, so there was a false statement here, or however you want to look at that. Um, another handy thing to use in if statements is Python's helpful in um, keyword. The in keyword will test whether something is inside of something else. It seems kind of obvious, so let's let's take a look because it it sounds really strange. So let's say we have x, just the letter x, in the word fox. Obviously, that's going to be true to untrue. So this is testing if x is actually in this string. And we can make this. A little bit different, make it a capital X, and then it returns false because it's there is no lowercase x in this particular string. Now in will work on pretty much any iterable, and a string is an iterable, a list is an iterable, um, the keys in a dictionary are considered an iterable. So let's create a list real quick and try using n inside of a um, conditional statement. Oh, we have this, g 
two, three, and four. So now we can just do if if one is if one in my list. Just print the list out, make it really simple. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm always thinking in Python 2 land because all my jobs have always been using Python 2, which doesn't use the, the braces. So here we go. One is in the list, so it goes ahead and prints the list. Pretty simple. But this is really powerful for testing whether or not something is actually inside of an iterable. So we should probably talk about the not operator. It's a little bit confusing, especially when you're first learning how to use it, because not basically make, makes today opposite day. So if we take this statement that we just created and we add the not to it, not keyword. And basically what we're saying is, if one is not in my list, print the list. Well, we know this isn't going to do anything because um, well, first of all, it has a syntax error. I copied the wrong if statement. But secondly, one is in the list, so it won't print anything. Um, so let's make the list a, a little bit different. I'll just pop out uh, the first element. So now my list should have two, three, and four in it. So now if we test to see if one is in the list, we will discover that it is not and it'll print out. Yeah, it's even confusing just explaining it. But so in this case, we're saying if one is not in the list, print the list. Well, one is no longer in the list, so the list will print. You have to think about it a little bit, but it does make sense because sometimes you do want to test if something is not in the list anymore because then you'll do something different. So, now we have different different items. Let's go ahead and create, use the list, continue to use the list, and we'll also create a couple of variables. X equals 10, for example, and we'll make a Z. So we'll say if X not in uh, my list, and we'll use the Z, and we'll use the and operator, not equal to ten. Now this is a little bit confusing because when you say the um, exclamation point is also a not, but it's a binary not. So you do not equal to or not in. So you just gotta kind of watch out for that. There's a little little bit of weirdness there in Python's uh, language. All right. Anyway. So anything inside of a print statement, anything in following an if statement has to be true. So we'll just say this is true and see if this happens. Okay, so 10 is not inside this list that only contains two, three, and four. Z is equal to 11. So we're testing right here that Z is not equal to 10. And since both those statements are true, the code is executed following the if statement. Now, Python has a lot of different ways to look at nothing, which is kind of funny. So, you know, you have an empty list, which is just basically an open brace, open close brace. You now an empty string is just an empty string, you know, it doesn't have any, any characters inside of it. So sometimes you want to test for that. You want to see, is the list actually empty? Because sometimes you're looking for a list that has items in it that you want to act on. So like say, let's say that you have emails that are coming in and you're testing to see if you have an email because you have a little pop-up that will show if you have emails that have come in. Well, if the list returns empty, then you haven't gotten any emails in the last five minutes. So you, want to, you don't want anything to pop up and just say, hey, you have no email. You only want to pop up and say, I have an email, I have two emails, or whatever. So to test for that, you just say if empty list equals empty, you know, 
do something like this, print, it's empty. Now, you can also test the opposite, really simple, really simply here. Let's, um, let's just do this, not empty. This is kind of a shortcut. What basically you're saying here is, if there's anything inside the list, print it's not empty. Well, we already know that empty list is empty, so this won't print anything. But this is a really nice uh, shortcut and say, instead of saying, you know, if the length of empty list is greater than zero, print this out. Because you could do that too, but this instead of that, you can just say if empty list, um, print something. Because this, uh, when you have an empty list, it means that it's like a null or none. So in that case, that's always a false. So let's, let's re reiterate. So false is basically equal to an empty list or none or an empty string. But when it comes to conditional statements, all of these are basically equal. I mean, if you go ahead and try to test if they're equal, you'll find out that that is false, which is confusing, I admit. But when you're trying to test if something is true, it has to actually contain something. And since none of those contain anything, they are false, and that's why this will not print it out anything right at this time. So, you know, if we say um, nothing equals none, if nothing, print something, Did it again. Sorry about that, guys. Let's just get this going correctly. All right. And else. Oops. Nothing is nothing. Okay. So if true, print something. Else, print nothing is nothing. Well, Nothing is equal to none, so none evaluates to false. So this won't print here, the something won't print. Instead, it'll print nothing is nothing, which makes sense. Okay, so we've basically covered all the, the major parts of the if, else, uh, if, lf, and else statements. Um, and we've also covered Boolean operators like and, or, or not. You should be ready to go ahead and start creating your own awesome applications with conditionals at this point. I look forward to seeing you guys next time.